Hello, my name is Norman Fenton, and this is the second graphical example of Simpson's paradox, which is a statistical paradox that has mystified decision makers for many years and actually led to a lot of flawed decision making. The example I want to focus on is actually a variation of one that's in the excellent Book of Why by Perla McKenzie. Now, it is a great book, but there's a problem with this example. It doesn't quite work. In their example, they're looking at the impact of exercise on cholesterol. And what they show is on the left here that people within this age bracket, the people 50 plus people, exercise appears to have a beneficial effect, the downward slope, in the sense that the more exercise they do, the lower their cholesterol. Similarly, in this age bracket, 40 plus, 30 plus, 20 plus, 10 plus, so in each of the different age categories, exercise is beneficial. The more exercise they do, the lower their cholesterol. But of course, the point is that when you actually aggregate those all together, looking at the population as a whole, which we do over here, you actually see that there's an upward trend. It appears that the more exercise they do, the higher the cholesterol. So you get this very, very strange counterintuitive reversal, whereby when you look at the population as a whole, the more exercise people do, the higher their cholesterol, even though within each of the different age categories, we get the reverse effect whereby exercise leads to reduced cholesterol. The problem with this example is that it doesn't really work in reality because it suggests that when you look over here, data shows that people in the older category are the ones who tend to do the most exercise. Yes, they also have the most cholesterol, but they're doing the most exercise. And that clearly is wrong. Now, at first, I thought that this was simply due to maybe a typo, whereby these age categories were in the wrong order. They should have been the other way around. I actually, instead of going from youngest to eldest up here, it should have gone from oldest to youngest up here, which would have actually shown that the older people did the least exercise and the younger people did the most. But if you do that reversal, then you hit a different type of error because that would suggest that older people have lower cholesterol generally than younger people, which is again, clearly wrong. So whichever way you spin this, the example doesn't work with those chosen attributes, exercise and cholesterol. But actually, there is a way of making it work by choosing a different attribute. In fact, what I've looked at is daily exercise against junk food consumption. So again, imagine that we've got a sample of people in each of a number of different age groups. And again, we plot how much daily exercise they do against how much junk food they consume. So in teenagers up here, what you can see is that they generally do a lot of exercise. They generally have high junk food consumption. But the trend is downwards in the sense that those who do do the least exercise tend to be those who eat the least junk food. What we'll then do is look at another category, young adults. And again, we see the same phenomenon, that downward trend whereby the more exercise they do, the least junk food they consume. Then we go on to the mature adults, same thing again, more exercise they do, the lower the junk food consumption. And finally, we're looking at the pensioners. And again, in that category, the trend is downward. The more exercise, the least junk food. Now, the interesting thing here is, of course, as we've gone up in age category, notice that both daily exercise and junk food consumption generally have gone down, which is correct. Older people tend to do less exercise. They also tend to eat less junk food than younger people. So again, what we're going to do is aggregate all that data, see what it looks like together. So we've got the teenagers, we saw that was down. We add the young adults, that downward trend there. We get the mature adults and we've got the pensioners. Now, when we've aggregated it all together, even though we had that downward trend in each age category, that as daily exercise increased, junk food consumption decreased, in the population as a whole, we see that the effect is reversed. Namely, it appears that the more exercise people do, the more junk food they eat. And of course, the fact that we've got that reversal from each category to the general population is an example of Simpson's paradox. Now, there is, of course, a causal explanation for all of this. What we can see is that there appears to be a relationship between exercise and junk food. That's clear. But there's a common factor affecting both the level of exercise and the junk food consumption, and that is, of course, age. 
older people do less exercise than younger people. But they also eat less junk food than younger people. And of course, that brings into question what the nature, if any, of that association between exercise and junk food. Is it all completely determined by age? Almost certainly not in this case. The association between exercise and junk food, nevertheless, does seem to be mainly explained by the common factor age. Now, there might still be a causal link from exercise to junk food, or from junk food to exercise. But even if there is a causal link between exercise and junk food, there is no doubt that age is what we call a confounding variable in that link. And it may not be the only confounding variable. For example, healthy attitude is another potentially confounding variable because that's going to influence the amount of exercise people do as well as the amount of junk food that they eat.